families often disagree or face money problems. Still, some manage to stay together and live their daily lives. I don't think it's necessary to decide which is happier. My name is Kelly. Since I was a child, people have called me strange. I don't know what's odd about me. I just think so because others say I am. It's okay to be called strange, but the problem is my parents avoid me because of it. My childhood was lonely. I can read people's minds and know what they're thinking. I don't understand how I do it, but it feels natural to me, like how ordinary people move their hands or breathe. Once, I felt something bad from a coworker my father brought home. I felt we needed to be careful with that person. I warned my mother, but she ignored me. Later, the coworker convinced my father to sign a contract as a debt guarantor. My mother didn't believe my story, but as my father was leaving the table with the coworker, I said, something tells me that the phrase joint and several is dangerous. I'm not sure what solidarity means, but be cautious. Because of this, my father decided not to sign as a co-signer. Later, when his colleague went bankrupt and couldn't pay his debts, my father didn't have to take on the burden. Another time, when I was out shopping with my mother, I felt a wave of unease coming from behind me. When I turned around, I saw a man wearing sunglasses and a hat, giving off that uneasy feeling. Mom, let's go that way, I said. I took my mom's hand, and we walked down a side street. She was confused, wondering what was wrong. As we moved, we heard a shout from the main street, I've been robbed. The man with the dark vibes had snatched a woman's bag and ran. The woman fell and got hurt. If we had stayed, my mom would have been his target. Because this happened a lot, my parents started to avoid me, thinking I was strange. I felt very lonely. What was normal to me wasn't normal to others. I was the strange, eerie child, so I kept my thoughts to myself. Even when I felt something was wrong, I stopped saying it out loud. I realized that if I didn't say anything, people wouldn't think I was strange. My younger sister Olivia is four years younger than me. She's a typical child, unlike me. As I got darker and darker, Olivia became more adorable and cute. My parents clearly preferred her to me. They thought, Olivia is lovely, but Kelly is dark and shadowy. Kelly is odd, even though she doesn't say strange things anymore. I pretended to be normal to avoid the pain my power caused me. I grew up without my parents' love. Whether it was because my attempts to seem normal made me seem unusual, or because once I was labeled as strange, it couldn't be erased. My sister, on the other hand, was raised with their love. She noticed my parents' coldness towards me and began to look down on me. She used to say, I don't like being around my sister because it transfers the darkness to me. I'm very attractive, but my sister affects my image negatively. She started saying things to put me down whenever she could. My parents just tolerated her behavior and never corrected her. One day, a scout from an entertainment company approached her. They asked her to join their agency when I was in my third year of junior high, and she was in her sixth year of elementary school. She said, it's obvious because I'm attractive. They said I could be on TV. My sister was already thinking about a career, which made our parents happy. I told her, you should take it slow and think about it. I have a bad feeling about this. I didn't want her to get into trouble, so I shared my feelings, which I had kept hidden for so long. My sister, unaware of my unusual ability, said, are you jealous because you're not attractive and can't communicate with others like me? Don't be strange and don't stand in my way. Her face turned red and she reached for me. My parents, who knew about my ability, either forgot about it or were too excited to see their younger daughter in the spotlight. They stood by her and accused me. I then decided to remain silent. I told myself that speaking up wouldn't lead to anything good. One day, a student teacher was scheduled to visit my middle school. He was a male college student who wanted to be a physical education teacher. He spoke about his educational dreams and gave a powerful speech to the teachers and students. He became very popular, especially with the female students. 
As he responded to the loud voices of the female students, I felt a wave of dread wash over me. I had made it a rule to keep my abilities hidden, but when I saw that my classmates were in danger, I decided to break my own rule. I approached a teacher who seemed to understand. I said, I know this is unexpected, but please believe me and help me. The teacher was confused by my sudden statement, but did as I asked and state out a specific location after school. I kept the details from the teacher because I knew he wouldn't believe me if I explained everything. The teacher listened to me without needing an explanation. The next day, the whole school was in an uproar. The student trainee had broken the law by entering the women's restroom with a video camera. The teacher had staked out the area and caught him within 20 minutes. Because of this, the female students were not victims of voyeurism and were spared from being humiliated. Meanwhile, my younger sister enthusiastically joined the entertainment agency that scouted her. However, there were no lessons or auditions, just high fees to pay. Then, the agency suddenly closed down. My sister had been scammed. She screamed and cried, blaming me. It's all because of you. You ruined my future. It's your fault. Even though it was an absurd accusation, she believed it. This belief helped her cope, but it was a disaster for me. My parents didn't say anything ridiculous, but they did notice she was distancing herself from me and getting closer to them. As the strange child, I felt lonely again. While I was glad I had helped everyone at school, I worried my actions would make things worse for me. The next day, the teacher who had listened to me called me to the staff room. I was scared of being labeled as strange again. When I entered, the teacher said quietly, You knew this was going to happen about a week ago, didn't you? Without warning, I knew it was pointless to lie. So, I told him about my mysterious power. It was the first time someone understood what I was going through. The teacher explained that he knew someone with my ability his aunt. I've known about her for a long time. I understand you have a lot on your mind, he said. You'll feel better if you get advice from someone who understands, the teacher said. Then he introduced me to Nicol. She looked me in the eyes and said, It's natural to be concerned, but you don't have to suffer. Her kind, deep eyes seemed to see everything and drew me in. Nickel had the same power as me since childhood and had spent her life troubled and hiding it. Hearing her story, someone who had gone through similar experiences, started to free me from my fears and doubts. From that day, Nickel became my mentor, though she laughed when I called her that and said, Just call me Nickel. Nickel changed my life. I had lived a modest, shadowy existence, hiding who I was, but she transformed my consciousness. Gradually, I began to live my daily life as a normal girl. However, since the incident with the entertainment agency, my sister and I have grown apart. She rarely talks to me, and when she does, it's usually to complain or make fun of me. My psychic abilities couldn't predict her emotional shifts. She would say things like, What's the big deal about you getting accepted to college? Aren't you just a mental flower garden? My sister had failed the entrance exam for her first choice high school, even though she was told she would definitely pass. She ended up at a high school she considered her second choice. She was furious when I got accepted to her top choice university. I wasn't happy about it or bragging to her, she just made assumptions and disrespected me. My parents only consoled and coddled my sister during her difficult time and told me to stay away and not bother her. Despite growing up and becoming a better person since meeting Nickel, my sister still didn't seem to like me. I guess my sister doesn't like me unless I'm dark and gloomy. My sister is very intelligent, so it's surprising she didn't pass the high school entrance exam. She was very frustrated and put that frustration into her studies at the high school she enrolled in. She ended up being the top student for four years and got accepted into a difficult national university on her first try. She said, I got into the hardest university. Yours isn't as good as mine. I responded to her satisfied remark with a lighthearted, yeah, I guess so. I knew getting too involved with her would be a bad idea. 
My sister took my light response as an insult and lashed out at me. My parents were scared of her temper and could only watch and worry when she got like that. They blamed me, calling me a liar and a troubled daughter. I wanted to argue about which one of us was really the troubled daughter, but I kept quiet because I didn't want to make things worse. Aside from my sister, I was nearing the end of my college career and needed to decide about my life. I'm not as dark and withdrawn as I used to be, but I'm still not sociable and doubt my ability to form successful relationships. My ability to sense people's negative emotions makes it hard. I can understand positive feelings, but negative thoughts hurt me. I've been overwhelmed by negative emotions at school and almost stopped trusting people. I was worried if I could do well in a corporate job. I talked to my mentor, Nicole, about this. I was sure she had faced similar challenges and wanted to know how she overcame them. She said, I went through the same difficulties you're facing now. Maybe you should do something like I did. She told me she had spent a long time working as a fortune teller or counselor, helping people with their problems. She said, with your ability, you can really help others and contribute to the world. Working freelance means, you don't have to be part of an organization and don't have to deal with people's emotions or relationships, which you're afraid of. It's the perfect job for people like us. I decided to pursue the same job with my mentor's encouragement. She showed me how to do the job and find customers. Thanks to the internet, I can now work from home. When I told my parents and younger sister that I would work from home instead of getting a job after graduation, they asked, what exactly is it? What kind of job is it? What type of work is it? Then at least you should do our housework. What about living costs? I expected these questions, but I was disappointed they weren't more supportive. While I understood their expectations for housework and money, it still made me sad. I could see my sister disrespecting me even more in the future, which added to my sadness. So, my life as a work-from-home employee began. There were no job offers at first, and it was a trial and error process, but with my mentor's help, I gradually got work. I couldn't contribute money to the household for about a year, so I focused on housework. My father was not pleased, but my mother was relieved and kept him in check. When I finally contributed money after about a year, my father mocked me, saying, Huh, you finally got some money, didn't you? Despite this, the amount of housework I had to do did not decrease, and my life remained the same. Three years later, my sister graduated from university and decided to work for a foreign company. The pay was good, and she told me, unlike you, I'm not a parasite. I work outside the home. She mocked my work-from-home job, saying, I have no idea what you're doing. Working from home? Isn't that just for fun? You're a parasite in your own home. My pay will increase, and I'm sure I'll be making 15 times more than you. Someone like you could never make that much money. After a year and a half, my sister was promoted to chief and continued to brag about her good salary. However, she didn't contribute anything to the household or help with any chores. She left the laundry, cleaning, meal preparation, and everything else to my mother and me. My mother and I shared the work, but she delegated most of it to me, so I ended up doing almost everything. Olivia, you need to take better care of yourself, I said. Instead of spending all your money on yourself, you should help out with the household expenses. She snapped back, you're a waste of space. You should do all the housework. I'm saving money for my future. My parents sided with her, saying it couldn't be helped because she's my sister. I wanted to stay in my current job because it was comfortable, but I began to wonder what I should do with my life. Then my sister made a shocking announcement. I'm getting married. There was no warning, and my parents and I were stunned. He's a wealthy man who earns more than 20 million a year. Oh, I'm sorry I became happy first, sister, but isn't marriage just a pipe dream for someone like you? She said she'd bring her boyfriend over the following Sunday. When the day came, we were in a state of panic due to the rapid events. The man she brought was young, dressed in a suit and tie, and looked capable. 
My name is Michael. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've come to propose to Olivia, he said with dignity and politeness. I told you he was wonderful, didn't I? I'll be happy with him, Olivia said. My father, despite being impressed by Michael, asked, Michael, what is your job? I'm currently training at a company owned by a friend of my father's, Michael replied. Olivia explained, his father is the company's president. He is training outside the company to be his successor. Olivia seemed overjoyed at the prospect of marrying the future president of a company. We talked about various topics before Michael left. Despite a few gaps in the conversation, my parents seemed pleased with him. However, I felt a shadow of darkness from Michael. I couldn't explain it, but I felt it. I couldn't stay silent any longer, fearing that marrying a man with this type of darkness would make my sister unhappy. Listen, Olivia, you've only been dating him for less than five months. Get to know him a little better before you decide to marry him, I said, feeling alarmed. I couldn't explain and tried to reassure my sister with something vague. What exactly are you talking about, sister? He is a man of great distinction and a future president. You're just upset because you're comparing your situation to my happiness. You're a pitiful person, aren't you? She snapped. My parents also yelled at me to stay out of the way. Such a wealthy man will soon be our son-in-law. You're a nobody, so at least stop interfering with your sister's happiness. It was clear they wanted their daughter to marry a rich man so they could live in peace in their old age. I was filled with rage because I couldn't tell my sister about the dark shadow I sensed around her. In the meantime, they got engaged, and a meeting between the two families took place. My sister's fiancé's parents seemed just as respectable as Michael, but I still felt the same dark presence around them. However, the wedding day arrived before I could warn my sister and parents, who were too excited to listen. The president of our company is attending today's reception. Do you know how talented and promising I am? It's a great honor, but you, my stay-at-home sister, can't even imagine how great it is. My sister said before leaving the house, adding her usual words of disrespect. They pledged their eternal love at the hotel's wedding hall and then entered the reception hall. My sister looked happy with a big smile on her face, but I was concerned about how long that happiness would last. The president of the company gave the speech as the guest of honor. It was a congratulatory speech that praised my sister, and she was pleased with it. After the speeches, drinks and food were brought to each table. The food looked delicious, but I began to feel uncomfortable. Nothing had been brought to my table. At first, I thought it was just a delay, but other tables had already received drinks and hors d'oeuvres one after another. It was obviously strange. I was the only one who hadn't received anything. The people at my table noticed and started to feel uncomfortable too. At that moment, my sister came up to me and whispered with a laugh, free food is not for people like you. This food is too good for you. Just go home and eat potato chips. Leave our wedding gift and go home. My eyebrows sh shot up at her outrageous words. The groom was grinning and nodding from his seat. Even my parents pretended to be surprised at first, but then they said, well, Olivia is right. I was shocked and then a surge of anger followed. I can't believe you could be this cruel. Father and mother, how can you accept such rudeness? I said. My parents gave me a bitter look but didn't scold my sister. I understand. I'm going home, but you'll regret this, I said. What's with that threat? Is it the howl of a loser? My sister mocked. The hall buzzed with excitement at this turn of events when a man stood up suddenly. I'm the groom's brother, Larry. My brother and parents are scum, but the bride is even worse. I can't take it anymore, he said. Larry continued, Father, your company went bankrupt half a year ago, yet you still pretend to be its president. You're trying to take advantage of your daughter-in-law and her family. Michael, you can't be president anymore either. You're unemployed and trying to leech off your wife. The buzz in the hall grew louder at Larry's words. My sister, turning bright red, yelled, What do you mean? 
You cheated me. What do you mean you're unemployed? Her face gradually turned from red to blue, and her eyes filled with tears. My parents were also clueless and began screaming. The screams of my family echoed through the hall. Both the groom and his parents were stunned and silent. In fact, before the wedding, I had received Larry's confession and apology. I had asked Larry not to hesitate to speak his mind if something happened during the reception. As my sister blamed Larry with anger and resentment on her face, another man stood up, looking like he had enough. It was the president of my sister's company. Enough of this. This is not right, he said. You have no right to blame the groom. What makes you think you can criticize his brother? His voice was filled with anger, and my sister looked frightened. I didn't attend your ceremony for your sake, he said. If you weren't Kelly's sister, to whom I owe so much, I wouldn't be here. My sister's eyes went wide when the president suddenly mentioned my name. Kelly, what does she have to do with this? The president explained, Kelly has saved many companies from crisis. She is like a goddess to us business owners. Under her mentor's guidance, she started as a fortune teller and life consultant, and then became an advisor for corporate revitalization. Although she had no managerial knowledge, she used her powers to show companies the right path. One after another, the companies she advised experienced amazing recoveries. Because of this, she is known as a teacher and a goddess. Your company was also consulted seven months ago, and with her advice, it became stronger. My sister, shocked, said, Oh no, I didn't know anything about that. Aren't you just a stay-at-home nobody? Thanks to Kelly, my business is going well. I have a good job and now earn more than you do. I put enough money into the house, but my parents don't care about me. What do you think all that money was for? It wasn't Olivia's, the president clarified. My parents seemed to have misunderstood. There was no way Olivia could have brought money into the house. The wedding party broke up in confusion. The wedding gifts were fully refunded to everyone. My sister sobbed, how are we going to pay for this ceremony now that we don't have the money from the gifts? Besides, I relied on Michael's income and signed a contract for a condominium in my name. I can't pay the rent by myself if I'm unemployed. Michael coldly replied, you signed the contract on your own, didn't you? I don't know anything about it. Divorce, 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 you crook. My sister's marriage quickly fell apart. It was a mess, and this chaos was the result of his malicious behavior. Afterwards, my sister divorced Michael and demanded alimony. Michael and his parents couldn't afford to pay a large amount, and they barely managed to cover the wedding hall costs. They couldn't afford the condo they had signed for, so it was canceled before they ever lived in it. However, the loan balance remained a heavy burden on my sister. The outrageous behavior at the wedding spread quickly among the company officials who attended. My sister lost credibility, and the company president demoted her to a lower position. She lost her pride as an elite employee and wanted to quit, but she had to keep working to repay the loan. She ended up doing trivial work in a basement reference room, work that may or may not have been important. Michael and his parents failed in their attempt to leech off my sister. They are now struggling to make ends meet by working day jobs. Larry, Michael's older brother, separated himself from his parents and younger brother. My parents easily gave up on my sister when she hit rock bottom and came to me for help. But I said, I don't want to be pushed around by you guys anymore. I'm cutting you off. Goodbye. With that, I left home signed a lease on a new apartment, and began a new life. I took in my sister, who had fallen on hard times and was struggling to make ends meet. Her salary had been drastically reduced, and she couldn't afford to contribute to our parents' household. Naturally, I also stopped putting money into my parents' house. Unable to lower their standard of living, my parents quickly became exhausted and complained every day. My business is going well, and I am helping many companies and people positively. After the wedding incident, I started dating Larry, and he recently asked me to be his girlfriend. 
If things continue as they are, marriage is on the horizon. I can't wait to build a happy life with Larry, who has a clear heart and no dark shadows.